Hello, it's Cara Riley, and welcome to the Landscape Photography Show, episode number 22. And tonight we'll be talking about fall and winter photography. We're so excited to um, share with you, and we want to thank you all for all of the beautiful pictures we almost have. 600 photos in our gallery and you know those actually stay with the event so your work is, is will be in there forever and we are going to go tonight with a lot of fun ideas different tips that are going to help you and we're ready to share some of those ideas and we are going to start with a fun new concept that Margaret Tompkins is going to share with you and you will you're just gonna really really enjoy it so Margaret hi everyone um, really good to be with you tonight uh, we are just so excited uh, in the landscape photography theme uh, to do some uh, things that are really going to feature the work that uh, people uh, submit to us and we've just shared a video that uh, Kevin Rowe uh, brilliantly put together um, a slideshow of many of the wonderful photographs that uh, we have selected and shared on our theme page this month so we're going to make that a regular feature so um, to all the people who uh, uh, send their photographs to us, uh, uh, hundreds of them each day, uh, the curators uh, select those and we post them on the uh, landscape uh, photography theme page. But uh, this new video will give you extra exposure for your great photographs and your work. And we're also going to be producing circles. Uh, circles are all the people whose photographs get shared to the landscape photography theme. Uh, we'll be putting you in a circle and sharing that circle uh, to all of Google+. So another way to uh, gain some recognition for your excellent work and we want to showcase that. So we are so excited to be able to do that and uh, we're looking forward to getting that all started just real soon. So stay tuned and uh, keep those photographs coming in. We want you to be a part of that. Great. Now we're ready to go to our show starter. And Kevin Rowe is going to give us the show starters. Um, with all the photographs, we had 565 photographs. Each panel member has selected one photograph to start the show. So Kevin, thank yeah, you. Th thanks. So the I think we all had a hard time choosing some photographs this time because there were so many and a lot of great ones. So uh, this is the one I chose, and this is Ed Kunzelman, and uh, just an awesome photo. Um, you got uh, beautiful colors, lots of layers, awesome mountains. Just a great job, Ed. Margaret? I'm not seeing the new one. Uh, this is from uh, Carolyn Lim. Is anyone else seeing it? Yeah, yeah there it is. There it is. Uh, this is Carolyn Lim's uh, photograph of Monument Valley, and I just love everything about this photograph. Um, with uh, skies that don't have a lot of clouds, you kind of wonder what are you going to put in the gap there between the two mittens? And she found this wonderful old ragged juniper tree there. Uh, so I just absolutely love this photograph. So here's a nice snowy uh, addition from Monument Valley from Carolyn Lim, who is one of our curators, by the way. So congratulations, Carolyn. And Cara? Okay. Um, this uh, picture here, this beautiful photo, is from Lori Novak who is from the Chicago, Illinois area and uh, it just looks like a holiday card ready to go with a sleigh ride. She's got uh, real nice lines and you can just feel the crisp air and uh, Lori is a lot of fun. She um, appreciate you for uh, posting your photo in our gallery. Okay and uh, this is Tom. Yes, um, this picture is from uh, Gary Monroe and uh, I liked it for a couple of reasons. One is I like the, the lines in it 
Um, the other interesting thing for me was usually when you see a reflection in the water, all the lines are straight, but just due to the way the light was behind the tree, it almost looks like there's a wiggle there. Then that, that's almost the, the paper was folded or something. So that was was seemed very very unusual for me. So I, I like this one. Great. And Jim. Yep. Um, so this is from Sean Hudson, and uh, he's uh, from Nova Scotia. Um, I loved the colors and the reflection. Um, and uh, when you when you view it large, you know the little boat on the distant shore, the the curve of the shoreline kind of lead your eye around. Just a gorgeous photo from Shonda. All right. So uh, again, we appreciate everyone and uh, keep keep sharing those with our uh, our stuff. And we're just going to go straight to uh, Jim and start off the uh, show. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Yep. And let's see. So uh, my name is Jim Worthman. Um, I'm an amateur enthusiast, uh, photographer, based in Phoenix, Arizona. do mostly landscapes. You'll see my work pop up now and then. Um, and uh, I uh, am tonight going to talk about my favorite fall and winter locations, mostly from the southwest US, so U Arizona and Utah. Um, and uh, I'm going to start with some fall shots. And one thing that... Uh, that I've noticed and is that the colors for, for autumn colors that we have are mostly yellows from aspens and cottonwoods, um, not so much red as you'll see in, uh, in New England. So let me start the screen share. Okay. You seeing that? Yeah, gorgeous. Okay, so Thanks, Margaret. Um, uh, this one was from southern Utah uh, near Cedar Breaks um, a few years back. I love the, you know, the bare trees in the background contrasting with the foliage. Um, now we're going to move a little bit closer. Uh, this is outside of Flagstaff, Lockett Meadow, which I think Kara has probably seen up uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. near the San Francisco Peaks. Um, and again, a lot of yellows are predominant. Now we're going to move uh, even closer to Phoenix and, and uh, have a series from Sedona, or the Sedona area. And this is from the West Fork of Oak Creek Canyon, which runs uh, down and right through Sedona. It's kind of fun shooting fall colors to, to do detail shots. So you get nice expansive landscapes, but I also like to just kind of get in close and look at some details. Most of these are from just a couple weeks ago in Sedona. Another shot from West Fork. And, you know, so also just doing abstracts is kind of fun. More West Fork. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to end my autumn colors with a series of shots from... Crescent Moon Ranch, all otherwise known as Red Rock Crossing, and uh, again, these were these were from just uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, colors were were kind of at their prime, um, and uh, so I'll show you just a few from Red Rock Crossing. And that's one probably most of you will recognize, uh, kind of the iconic um, Cathedral Rock, right at sunset. And uh, was neat is shooting this uh, right after our long exposure show. So I decided to get out the ND filter and give it a try. Okay. It's amazing. Yeah. So well, how long was the exposure, Jim? Uh, that one was probably two, three seconds. Okay, cool. So could have been longer. But yeah, that's cool. So Love the uh, light on that. Thank you. Moving into winter photography, and, and my feeling is you got to have fun. If you can't have fun, what's the point, right? Um, so in, in Sedona, I'm going to start with Sedona again. So we just left Sedona in the autumn, and here's Sedona in the winter. It doesn't snow often, but when it does, if you happen to be there at the right time, it's gorgeous. This is, again, Cathedral Rocks um, with some mist swirling around it. And here's a similar... Uh, 
if it was the same day, uh, just a different point of view, but in the distance you can see the mist swirling around Cathedral Rocks. And for those who know the Sedona area, uh, these were shot from Upper Red Rock Loop Road. The one thing that um, is kind of neat about uh, snow scenes is if you get a nice dusting of snow, it really can bring out texture and detail. Um, and for those, I love to try them out in black and white, just see what they'll do. And I thought this one worked pretty well. Uh, again, cathedral rocks in the distance with uh, a lot, you know, some Arizona cactus and whatnot, but there's just a lot of detail in this one. Another one near Sedona. This is West Sedona, a place called Bear Mountain. Again, it's, it's uh, you, with that dusting of snow, you can really see a lot of the detail in the foliage. Another one from West Sedona, formation called the Elders. And I think this is the last Sedona shot, and again, from Upper Red Rock Loop Road. So now, moving north, and the first stop briefly is Flagstaff. This is a shot from uh, Northern Arizona U University, NAU campus. Now, moving up closer to Sedona, this is a shot from the Echo Cliffs area of the Vermilion Cliffs in the distance. So not a whole lot of snow, but <laughs> it was cold. It was winter. And uh, about five miles south of Page, Kind of iconic horseshoe bend, and uh, and again, it doesn't. You don't get snow on it all that often. Another shot of horseshoe bend, and now to the west of Page is the area called Vermilion Cliffs National Monument, and I've got two shots from there. This is South Coyote Buttes, sunrise at South Coyote Buttes, and and again, very unusual to get it with snow. Yeah. And a nearby formation called White Pocket. And these were both shot a couple years ago, just a couple days after Christmas, actually. Okay. And now we'll move farther north in the state, up toward Monument Valley. This is a little church that I shot in Kayenta uh, during a fairly heavy snowstorm. And uh, this was actually uh, an iPhone shot. <laughs> Too many of those, but I thought this worked well. And now, Monument Valley. You probably recognize this as John Ford Point. And Margaret has a great shot of a horse in there. <laughs> yeah, uh, a, a person on horseback sitting out at the point, but not on this day. It was a bit too uh, cold and snowy to have horses out there. Nearby formation called Three Sisters in Monument Valley. And here's sunrise at Sentinel Mesa. Now I'm going to go through just a series of shots of uh, the mittens at different times of the day. So starting early and going uh, later in the day. So this is the blue hour before sunrise, and uh, it's kind of hard to see a lot of texture, uh, but there's there's definitely texture in the snow. A little bit later, almost sunrise. Then sunrise and the nice warm light just starts illuminating the snow and uh, and you know of course white snow really does a good job of picking up that warm sunrise light. Now here the, the sun had been up just a little while it was still fairly low in the sky but um, this is a good opportunity to talk about exposure control when you're shooting snow. You probably know that the meter in your camera likes to think of everything it sees as 18 percent gray. And so if you have, it uh, doesn't matter if it's a matrix meter or an averaging meter, even a spot meter, when it's seeing a lot of snow, it's going to underexpose. I mean, it's going to turn the snow into 18% gray, essentially. And that's not very attractive. So what do you do about it? Well, a number of things, you can use a gray card. So if the gray card is in the scene for a test shot, you can set your exposure because it is 18% gray. Um, you can use a handheld incident light meter to measure the, the amount of light falling on the scene. The simplest way, though, is just to use your exposure compensation dial. If you're shooting in aperture priority, as an example, just overexpose the scene by one and a half to two stops. And that's a good average. 
Uh, some scenes, depends on how much snow there is, it, you might want more or less uh, compensation, but a good starting point is one and a half to two stops, um, and be sure to bracket. You might discover that the right exposure was, was only half a stop over. But in general, you want to overexpose so that snow comes out uh, nice and, and white. And uh, again, if it's, if it's warm uh, sunrise light, it's, gonna, it's not going to be white, but at least you'll get the right exposure. The other thing is you notice all the texture in the snow here, and that's, that's one thing I really like about winter photography. When the sun angle's low, so right after sunrise or right before sunset, it, the, the light really brings out wonderful textures in the snow. The problem you have to watch for, though, you're going to be overexposing to get a, a good exposure. Um, if you go too far, you lose all that gorgeous texture. Okay? There's another one. This is uh, almost sunset. Same place, different light. And the last one I have of the mittens is uh, blue hour, and, and that's actually a uh, full moon rising up through the thumb of the mitten. Okay, now we move on to uh, Utah again. This is uh, um, Mesa Arch in Canyonlands. Um, a nearby view uh, from Dead Horse Point State Park. Now we move into Arches National Park. This is uh, the Fiery Furnace. And iconic, delicate arch. If you've ever seen a license plate on a vehicle from Utah, you've probably seen this arch. I've seen it a couple times. <laughs> Once or twice, <laughs> yeah. So this is a bit east of Moab along the Colorado River, which you see in the foreground. Uh, the formation is Fisher Towers right at sunset. A lot of ice floating in the river. It was just a, a beautiful scene that day. Yeah, that's gorgeous. I love that. Thank you. And moving on to, uh, let's see, Zion, uh, checkerboard mesa. One more Zion shot. And a little closer to home, uh, just outside of Phoenix, is Four Peaks. And again, very rarely gets snow. And last, I'm going to show a couple shots from northwest Pennsylvania. Uh, this one I labeled bench sickles. Um, <laughs> was taken yeah, long. there's a few on there, huh? <laughs> yeah, just a few. And uh, the last shot is... Uh, you know, another monochrome, and I just love the the forms that the snow of the snow on the ground and the textures, and uh, you know that's that's another one just really well suited for monochrome. So that's it, and uh, I hope I hope you enjoyed seeing the places that I like to shoot during fall and winter. That's great. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, so I guess Margaret, it's on to you. Okay, uh, let me see if I can. Um... Share the screen here. One thing um, that we do have um, in uh, the Midwest is uh, great fall colors. Uh, we're, we have those um, uh, wonderful maple trees and oaks that give the uh, bright red and oranges and the gold colors. Um, these uh, are several that are taken at uh, Burr Oak Woods, which is not too far from where I live. Uh, it's 1,100 acres of um, native Missouri woodlands, and these are a few native Missouri critters uh, <laughs> that are out enjoying uh, the afternoon. These are young um, male turkeys, jakes they're called. They often form in packs and kind of uh, move around the territory together, but you see some of the gorgeous colors uh, there in the trees. And uh, here's another uh, native Missouri bird uh, helping himself to the bird feeder. These are all at uh, Baroque Woods. And here they are getting a drink from the local water fountain. So they just make themselves at home. They're, they're not headed for the uh, Thanksgiving table. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's the reason you were showing them, Margaret, for fall. Yeah. And um, here's uh, some of the, the colors. I really like this one. It has the um, 
the green cedars, uh, we get some evergreen cedars uh, here in Missouri that are just this emerald green color and they really blend in nicely with just some of the brush. Uh, these aren't necessarily trees, it's, it's more just brush and um, uh, they just turn such gorgeous colors, a lot of gold and oranges, uh, but that's very common uh, here in Missouri. Uh, now this is uh, my front yard. Uh, I don't have to go very far to find fall color, and so here is uh, just, this is uh, standing on my front porch when I took this, so uh, uh, very close, and one thing, it, um, I always I hear stories of people they they want to go to New England to take fall color and um, they'll say oh I was one week too early or it was two weeks too late uh, and it's really hard to pinpoint exactly which uh, week is going to be the premium color uh, but here in the Midwest we don't seem to have that problem uh, when our colors start turning uh, we will have sometimes uh, a good three weeks worth of uh, just spectacular colors and uh, we are still having good color though we're coming towards uh, sort of the end of the season but it has to do a lot with the moisture that's in the air and when you get some of those warm days and cool evenings uh, along with uh, substantial moisture uh, that just seems to be what um, turns the, the sugar that is in the leaves, uh, gives them that extra boost, and then when the chlorophyll drains out, uh, and you're left with all the pigments that are native in the maple trees and oaks, and just uh, spectacular colors. So that, that is my front yard. Now, I don't do much winter photography. I just don't go out in the snow. <laughs> It's not my thing, but this is my backyard uh, in a snowstorm. I think we had about three inches on the ground, and I do have some cedar trees out there. And this is not a black and white photograph. It's actually in color, but that's what it looked like. So uh, that's uh, uh, I need help when I'm trying to do snow photography. So I'm hoping Jim and some of the others are going to uh, uh, help me with that. Uh, but uh, also in the fall, um, we're a big football area here. Uh, we have uh, the University of Missouri, uh, and this is a photograph from uh, several years ago when they beat Kansas. They were playing at Arrowhead Stadium, uh, so there were like 75,000 people there. And uh, this one photograph sort of told the whole story. Uh, you see the uh, game up there that we won. Uh, and uh, Marching Mizzou, the band is behind the goalpost there and everyone's out running on the field uh, after the game. So this uh, uh, became a fairly popular uh, photo. Now let me see if I can come back here. Um, that one photograph that I took, um, uh, Car and I were talking the other day and uh, about making Christmas cards, and I was telling her about this one. Uh, this is the photograph that I had made up into Christmas cards, and this is one of those Walmart specials uh, for like 29 cents. You got a nice five by seven uh, Christmas card, and you could put you know text and stuff on the uh, front of it and everything, and it even came with. Um, uh, envelopes that had your return address on them so it was just all very uh, nicely done so I took that one photograph and sent it up to, uh, just uploaded it to Walmart and uh, they printed the cards and sent them to me and I mailed them out and I was just overwhelmed with the response that I got uh, people started ordering these cards so I went out and had several more boxes made up and started selling those cards and then the uh, most popular thing turned out to be um, this. I had a, uh, some prints made. Uh, these are five, or uh, let's see, eight by tens, framed and, and matted, and um, uh, that became very popular. So uh, I was sort of inundated with uh, family and friends um, insisting that they have their own copy of that photo. And um, 
one of the distant cousins uh, ended up sending out, I think, about 200 of them as uh, Christmas <laughs> gifts to people. So that was, uh, and of course, I made the mistake of not making any money off of this deal <laughs> because I kind of hate to charge your family and friends for a photograph that just uh, meant a lot to us, sort of personally. So, Car, um, uh, I think, is going to share some more things, but it is fun uh, to take one of your own photographs uh, and. Uh, uh, send it out to people and uh, this year I may be photographing the cats and sending them out to people we'll see what kind of reaction we get from them but uh, anyway that's uh, uh, my information for you here this evening and we're going to send you over to uh, Kevin oh okay well I don't know if I can follow that you know I don't have a a, a card that went viral within the community right so um, I guess the, the first thing I'm going to start with is just a couple of tips on fall shooting. And um, one thing that I really, I, I think really enhances the, the fall colors is using a circular polarizer. And if you think about it, when you're, uh, when you're wearing sunglasses and you're looking at the colors, and then you take them off, you're like, oh, man, put those back on. It looks better, right? And that's the same thing it's going to do with your camera. It's just going to make things look better. And I, I thought why I was showing that, um, you know, last, in the last show, we talked about filters, and then I talked about uh, step-down rings. And so, whoops, sorry. <laughs> so this is a 77-millimeter filter, and... I have several of these rings, and these sell for three to five dollars, so they're really cheap. But um, you know, like on my camera here, I have I have a ring converting one of my filters onto this this lens, and then you can get you know this is my little tiny lens, and yeah, it might look a little silly on there. That's a 77 millimeter filter going all the way down to. Uh, 46 millimeter thread, but uh, it works really good. So just thought I'd kind of show that, and uh, it's a lot cheaper to get those rings than buy a filter for every every uh, size lens you have. So let me jump in here, and I want to uh, start my screen share, and I want to go over um, just one quick tip in Lightroom. Now this is. Uh, I believe you can do this in Camera Raw, so Camera Raw or Lightroom. Now this is only for Raw, so if you're shooting Raw, then I like this tip. If you just go down here, you go down to the bottom of cam Camera Calibration, under Profile, you have these profiles. And I really like this uh, camera landscape. And you can, mm. hopefully you can see that just off of the off the uh, hangout screen, but I turned that off and on a couple times, and just that quick setting changes things. Yeah. So try that out. I think you'll like it. So that's uh, that was the photo, and then this was my final edited photo for that one. And this is just uh, um, around here in the Salt Lake Valley. There are countless places you can go and view... Um, fall colors and just right out of the valley are the big cottonwood canyons and big and little cottonwood canyon and this one is big cottonwood canyon and I was just out for a hike and um, this was actually taken with a zoom lens um, I think it was about 200 millimeters um, so of course with any type of photography I think uh, the golden hour is still the best time to shoot so what I really like with uh, you know the su setting sun on fall colors is it really increases those colors so these uh, these really aren't trees and maybe they're just short trees I'm not sure I'm not good with that type of thing but there are more bushes in there they're they're a red but they're not even close to that brilliant without that setting sun appearing on them so this is, uh, and that's overlooking the Salt Lake Valley down there, the kind of the western end of the Salt Lake Valley. That's gorgeous. The southern end. Love it. Thank you. But uh, don't discount 
going out and taking pictures in the middle of the day. Um, I hear a lot of people that say they don't, you know, only shoot at morning or evening. And yeah, you're probably going to get the biggest percentage, but sometimes you can get some great things uh, just taken. And this is by uh, Schofield, Utah, where I have a cabin uh, just up in the mountains. The backlight's gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah, that's one thing that, the you know, if you got some good sun coming through, um, it really does some great things with the leaves. So um, this is a real easy hike. Hike uh, starts at Brighton Ski Resort, and that's just one of the four ski resorts that are right close to the valley here. And uh, you've got about a, a mile hike up to this little lake, and there's some really nice colors. And I, re I really love uh, the aspens that are around here because they, they have a variety. They go from that nice golden yellow but then you also have some with the, the really bright oranges as well. And then, um, of course, you can have some different type shrubs and, and trees that have reds as well. So lots of good colors. Now here's my favorite place. I couldn't do a hangout without showing a picture of uh, Lake Blanche with Sundial Peak in the background. Every every time of the season up there is great. But uh, And there's not a lot of... Uh, of trees around it but this spot right here was good so I set up on that and that has a little snow in there too so we kind of get a little bit of both seasons in our fall <laughs> up in the mountains now this is actually taken after pretty much all the the leaves are gone there's no leaves on the trees but as long as there's no snow covering this up and this is just a little stream up Big Cottonwood Canyon you'll still have all these leaves sitting in the creeks and the streams. And I found a lot of times just uh, coming in with some detail and getting some shots of these leaves that are in the streams. I really like those. So uh, your assignment is to go out if your fall colors have fall, fall now, fallen off and go take some streams, pictures <laughs> with streams and leaves. <laughs> with your ND filter. That's right, with your ND filter. we got to combine shows, right, Jim? Now, I don't have a stream in my front yard, so I won't be able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you can find one somewhere, Margaret. Um, this is just a Antelope Island. Um, this is a place um, by Kaysville, Utah. And it doesn't snow much out there. Um, so this was kind of a interesting shot because it was actually a rainstorm, and then you had the the snow in the background there. Um, I don't have a lot of snow shots because this is what I'm usually doing in the winter and I'm too scared to take my camera with me when I'm doing that. <laughs> so every once in a while I will and that's what, <laughs> that's what I get. And then this is my my last one to share and my favorite thing and Jim covered this as well, my favorite thing with snow is sunset or sunrise when that snow just lightens up and turns orange and it just makes for beautiful scenes. So this was actually just taken from the the from my house uh, with a zoom lens. Um, so I was able to get all the other houses and telephone lines and things like that out of the way. So um, <laughs> I've just got a, a couple minutes, and I actually wanted to share one more thing real quick, and I'll That's come beautiful. off the screen share, and we'll hope that uh, we'll hope that you can see this. But uh, I wanted to share a, a a piece of gear that I use that I think really helps me with my um, fall hikes and things to go out and and see photos. And this is um, called a capture clip. Pro 2, and I, I was a, by Peak Design, and I was a, on Kickstarter, I backed this and got it on a Kickstarter, but what this is, is it puts a plate, um, and this one is a uh, Arca Swiss mount, and you can get a couple different mounts, so you put your uh, tripod mount on there, and then on your pack, this just slips in, and so you, the, way, the reason I really like this is because your camera is very sturdy on here while you're walking around, but you, you can one-handed take it off, put it back in. And I used to find that when I had the 
camera inside the backpack that I'd pass up a lot of shots because I thought, you know, it's too, just too big of a pain to take take it out of my backpack right now. So just wanted to sh pass that along, and that's it for me. Um, Kevin? Yeah. Just a quick question. Is that compatible if you already have uh, Arca Swiss QR plates on your gear, or do you have to use their plate? Well, you use their plate, but it's going to... It's gonna work on any all in your Arca Swiss tripods. Gotcha. So yeah, and that one's a micro plate. They have for my small NEX, but they have several different plates. Nice. So um, that's it for me, uh, Cara. Over to you. Okay, great. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much. I. Um, I'm really excited to be able to share some ideas. Um, Oops, we lost your audio. Of, a way of sharing with your friends, with um, business associates. I am a small business consultant and the founder of the Photo Tour Global Directory, and I'm taking this hobby and turning it into a passion, and I am constantly credited uh, Margaret for um, just uh, planting the seed of taking photography and I know we have some people out there who are, are new in photography and just keep listening and going forward every single time we have guests on this show and just watching on Google Plus I learn things and so I'm so thrilled to see Jim and um, Kevin going in with some sh small shorter shots you know not the whole big landscape but really kind of identifying uh, some of fall and um, so my feeling is that photography really is the doorway to engagement um, and whatever business product or service that you have this is going to open the door for potential future business and um, so I'm going to share with you some um, shots and tell you where I was inspired this first one um, is right we're going to have right here um, I'm sure I'll put it up on the screen all right, and I know you guys will look at that and you'll know who that relates to right away. Ray Billcliffe, um, when he was on our show, saying that light, and for those of you who are new, it's all about the light. <laughs> really, there's nothing, and you heard from all of our speakers uh, that it's following the light, and the in with these fall colors, the light really does enhance uh, the luminosity of whatever it is. And I'm going to talk about, you don't have to go places. Margaret talks about her front yard. This uh, holly bush was out in front of the movie theater that my husband and I go to in Flagstaff on uh, Wednesdays for our date day. But you just have to look for the light. It doesn't matter that it wasn't a wonderful garden. Um, and then here where you've got the black light, and, and I'm going to say a, a shout out to Vince Ong, who got us all started with, uh, well, me anyway, the shallow depth of field and how fun that can make a photograph with the, the light behind it, creating the bokehs and seeing through those red leaves. Um, just make it interesting. Now, this the, the space up here where my cursor is going is plenty of room to be writing some kind of an inspirational um, post or any kind of a message that you would want to share. So as you're using your photography, it, it actually can go and do different things. And here we are having the sky with the shadows and the bright light shining on there. Again, plenty of space here to write any kind of a message that you would like to share with people. And you're taking your hobby, turning it into something that makes them um, want to talk to you about, about your photography and your work. And there's another one of those shots, Jim. This actually was from Snowbowl um, up at um, Flagstaff. And, um, now the fun thing about this is, and I really want people to understand that the hashtags 
that you put on your photo are going to enable you to start talking to people who you would never know. I had on this shot hashtag Flagstaff Snowball and connected with a gentleman, um, Steve uh, Watkin in um, uh, Steel. Whoops. Are you, are you there, Cara? We lost you for a minute. I think she's back, but muted. Cara, you're muted. Looks like Cara's having a, a couple issues. Um, while she's coming back, Jim, when you are when you are taking your snow shots and you're using your exposure compensation, when you're bracketing, are you just uh, manually looking that, at that? And uh, okay, so you're not choosing a, a like a negative to <clears throat> even one. You're just kind of yeah. looking at the scene and and so, doing it that way. Yeah, what I'll generally do is is wherever I start, you know, in snow, I'll I'll um, intentionally increase the exposure course and and then when I bracket I'll just usually go both up and down by well couple stops so and I'll go in one stop increments okay that sounds good okay yeah. all right I think I'm back can you hear okay, me great. yes yes yep. Okay, so what I was talking about is the hashtags and how important they are. When you're searching for landscape photography and you use the hashtag, that's how we find you. Well, when you're posting and you're wanting to reach out to different businesses, um, when you're trying to connect with people, you need to hashtag and put your city maybe and your state. That way people will... Um, uh, connect with you through that, and that's how I connected with uh, Steve on this. So now I'm going to show you here. Here's making that same a similar shot into a vignette, looking up uh, with the sepia tones. Another DOF um, depth of field shot with plenty of room on the side to to leave a message. We love having fall with a line that leads us down the road, and again, up here, plenty of space to uh, share some kind of message on Instagram or um, Pinterest. Now, this shot, and I have to give a shout out to David Heath Williams, because he is the one that's, that gets down on the ground, and his shots are six inches from the... <laughs> <laughs> the water coming rushing in. So this is an inspiration from David, uh, just giving different ways to uh, take your pictures no matter what season. This is coming up Oak Creek Canyon from Sedona to Williams. I, I live in Williams, Arizona, the, the uh, gateway to the Grand Canyon. And it actually was so bright and so beautiful. I had pulled off the road to come and get this uh, this shot. So as you're looking for the light, and thanks Ray Billcliff, that's what we do, we look for the light. I think I know where that tree is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do you? It's in a, there's a motel there. There's a motel yeah. there. Is that Junipine? Uh, that could have been. I, I, don't, so. I don't know. I just pulled off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and Margaret has her favorite tree in uh, the Grand Canyon, you know, the infamous tree that everybody one takes. Now, this shot was taken um, a couple weeks ago with Mike Berenson, who was here doing a scouting trip for a night photography event uh, that will be held next Labor Day um, over the Grand Canyon. So we had fun here, but the light was just so amazing on the Grand Canyon and we didn't have any haze and there were the fall um, leaves and so this is what I did because uh, I, I the daylight savings was ending so you see how it just fits right in there and you can share with anyone um, on your Facebook, on your Instagram, on your Twitter um, all of these venues where people are looking at photography um, this 
obviously is a, uh, um, a little maple leaf there, and we're going to see something from uh, uh, Jasmine Simone, who used this as a love, you know, I love and Canada, um, the similar kind of thing, and then changing it up to the black and white. Again, the light coming through with plenty of room to write a message underneath. And this is an idea that you can all take, again, with the shallow depth of field, focusing on the, the um, aspen. That's, this is in front of our house. And um, I saw this online from actually from Jasmine. And happy Thanksgiving from our home to yours. So we're using our photography and being able to create uh, great gifts. This was my neighbor's yard, and uh, the sun was shining brightly with this great Thanksgiving um, a display, and so just made that into a vignette, sent it to her with uh, words that said, Happy Thanksgiving from our house to yours, and she already mailed them out. So she was just delighted to get uh, that concept. This was another display uh, in a place where I go, and add the Happy Thanksgiving, you've got your words there. As you're thinking and taking these micro shots of snow, of leaves, of different times of the year, think about that white space, even though this is blue space, uh, because here's where, uh, if you're on Pinterest, these are the kind of things, and you know, you can pin on Pinterest and it can come back to your Google Plus uh, post. So you can drive people right back to you with your Google Plus uh, posts. Here's just Holly making it into a vignette, a card-like. Maybe you want it with red, with this look of snow around it. Now this is one that was really I close to my heart. I love Aspens, and here was plenty of room on the side to write. And one of my friends in Fort Collins, Colorado, Tammy Spalding, shout out to you, Tammy. Um, her husband had a very serious accident with some brain injury. And she is doing speaking and talking to people about the seven lessons that she's learned from this experience. So I took that photo and the seven lessons that she had shared created a special card for her. Um, and so we're all kind of together just uh, doing some good feelings with our photography. So there's the light. We're looking for that light again. No matter what view you're looking for, it just shines up. And again, to David Heath, there was that red leaf. And, and don't be afraid to uh, stage your shots. Yes, I put that red leaf there. It wasn't, it wasn't there. Now, he did tell me I should have gotten up closer to the red leaf so that the red leaf was in the front, but this was up at the Northern Arizona University with the bright uh, leaves of yellow in the back. And as we're checking out here, this will be on the show notes. I'm going to leave the... Um, link to Walmart if you want to get your cards that Margaret was talking about and also there's a link to canvas printing 60 60% uh, off and um, you can get all kinds of presents and all kinds of um, ideas using your photography. So um, I hope that you'll all uh, run out <laughs> and start thinking about how you can share what you're doing um, with others. And so now we'll let Tom uh, close our show. Hi. Thanks, Kara. I'm Tom Hurl, and I'm a amateur photographer based in Carmel, California. And when we first talked about this show with fall and winter shooting, I felt a little bit of a disadvantage because we don't get a lot of snow, and and really the only fall colors we get is, is the, um, the poison oak turns a nice red. But I thought I'd start itching if I started taking pictures of poison oak and processing it. So um, I want to talk about two areas that I've taken re the past year on trips that are, are excellent for both fall and uh, winter photography. So with that, let me uh, share my screen here. Here we go. Just to give you an idea of what we're talking about, uh, for the fall photography, a lot of us in California go to the eastern Sierras. 
Now, if you, if you look at the mountains here, these are the Sierra Nevada mountains. Um, here's Yosemite Park. And for whatever reason, the best aspen groves are on the eastern side of the Sierra Mountains, um, on the side that's closer to the Nevada border here. And here's Yosemite Park. Here's Mono Lake. Let me move on a little more detail. Um, you have Mono Lake, and here's Route 395. And all along here, the uh, there's large aspen groves that are just beautiful in the, in the for fall colors. In particular, in the Mono Lake area, the Lee Vining area, people talk about Conway Summit, Virginia Lakes, Lundy Canyon, Lee Vining Canyon, and the June Lake Loop. Certainly, south of here, there there are other areas that people go to, more Mammoth Lakes and um, around Bishop. But this is an area that, that I've gone to the last two years and been rewarded with some wonderful colors. Um, in this area, the elevation might range from um, 6,800 feet up to 9,500 feet. And so naturally, um, the higher the elevation, the sooner it gets cold and the sooner that the leaves start to turn. So you, you pick your weekend, you want to go up there, and you may find that at the higher elevations, maybe the colors already peaked. But that's good because you can go to a, a lower elevation and usually find somewhere that the color is still very nice. So it's, it's a good area for that. In addition, you always have Mono Lake, which is great for sunrises and sunsets and uh, night shooting. And also the, uh, the ghost town of Bodie, which is a state park, is nearby. So it gives you a, a range of things to shoot other than just you know, bright, bright color leaves. Now, the first shot, this is Lundy Canyon coming up from the campground and um, give you an idea of the... Uh, the aspen colors we, we get in the eastern Sierras. And as I think as Kevin mentioned, I, I use a circular polarizer too for a lot of these shots to make the sky a little deeper, make the yellow pop a little more, give it a little more contrast. So that's, that's one hint that uh, Kevin's already mentioned with the circular polarizer. Um, here's another picture. That as you work your way up Lunday Canyon, there's a series of beaver ponds. And often these, these ponds are rel relatively shadow shallow, don't have a lot of ripples, so they're, they're great opportunities for reflections. And if you're lucky, maybe there's been a dusting of snow within last week like I had this year, so you get a little snow in the peaks in the background. Beautiful. Here's one of the, one of the shots like the others showed um, of the canopy of, a, the aspen, of an aspen grove. And as I said, usually you don't want to shoot into the sun. That's usually a no-no, but it's really great to get these leaves backlit because they really pop. And you can actually make the sun part of the picture um, if you stop down. In my case, this is an F12, my smallest aperture, and that gives me a star effect around the, uh, around the sun. So that, that's an interesting effect. You can include part of the picture. And here's another shot. This is June Lake. And I particularly like this, this location because the aspen trees were interspersed with the pines, and so you had a, a nice contrast with the yellows and the oranges and the greens and all of it reflected in the water. And I believe this was a, probably a, a six or eight second exposure done with a variable nutrient density filter, similar to what we talked about in the last show. And that smoothed out the water and seemed to improve the reflection. So it's something you can also do for, for full color. And um, I'm on my way home. It's always good to stop in Yosemite Valley. There's always fun things to take pictures of there. This is a, uh, a lower elevation. And Yosemite Valley is always fun because you have not only aspen, you have oak, you have some dogwood. Um, and so depending on where in the season, they, they change at slightly different times. And when I was there, it was mainly the oak that were changing colors. So it's always it was fun to go there on the way home. So let me switch gears now to winter. And last, last January, I happened to be in Utah on a, on a trip, and I went to Bryce Canyon National Park, which is circled in red there. Now, if I zoom in a little bit, you can get a, a better idea. It's, it's close to uh, Zion Park, it's Page, Arizona. Jim showed some nice pictures there. So it's, it's a fun area to go to. But Bryce Canyon is a little bit higher elevation and has more snow. And the thing I really liked about it is you have these beautiful red rock formations. And when there's some snow on them, they really seem to pop nicely. And so I can't imagine that this would be any better other than winter. It's great. And also, in the winter, you get, I think, some more dramatic skies as we had here. Um, That's beautiful. That's gorgeous. Yeah, with That's the snow. Amazing. Gorgeous. Yeah. Thanks. And you get less crowds, right? <laughs> oh, that, that's the other big thing, too. And uh, here, here's one of the, the hoodoos with, you know, again, a contrasting colors between the green 
evergreens, the, the white snow and the, the red rock. Um, and of course, you have to get a sunrise. And I, I, I got up early one morning and tried a couple of different locations, and I ended up liking this one the best. And you know, funny thing, it was Sunrise Point, so it was it was aptly named. I love so, that. Um, How much well, snow is on the ground there, Tom? Well, it, it's um, it's probably six to eight inches in parts. Okay. Um, it w wasn't wasn't bad at all. Um, two of the hints I, m I might share tonight for um, doing winter photography is during winter it's often cold, and the batteries don't like the cold weather, and they lose a lot of their capacity when it's cold, and so you'll find you won't get as many shots per battery when it's cold and so what you need to do is try to keep the batteries warm the best you can and if you have a spare battery carry it in your pocket keep it warm with when you're out there in the day and um, you'll get more shots from it if, if you manage to keep it warm the other thing you need to be concerned about is the camera is going to cool down as you're out using it during during the day and it'll be um, whatever the temperature is outside whether it's 25 or 30 degrees Fahrenheit when you go inside to your hotel room or wherever you take it in, usually it'll be more humid in there and warmer, and you'll find a lot of the water will condense on the cold camera, which you don't want to have happen. Um, it's one thing on the outside, but when it gets on the inside, it's, it's a problem. If it does, you get a lot of water condensing on the inside. You should take your battery out and tr dry it out the best you can, and eventually it, it'll dry out. One way ar around this, though, is to take your bag, take your camera, and put it in an airtight bag. It might be a Ziploc bag, you might have to get a gallon size, or depending on what size camera you have. If you, when you're still outside and the camera is cold, you put it in a Ziploc bag, zip it up, you can take it inside, the camera will warm normally, and when it reaches the inside temperature, it's safe to take it out. So that's, that's a hint to avoid uh, water condensation on your camera. A great suggestion, Tom. And and actually, I do that same thing with all my lenses. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's that's what I want to cover. So I guess we we go to you, you now, Jim. Okay. So yeah, now we're going to do our recommended photographers. And let me share my screen. That was a great, a great segment, Tom. Thank you. Those are some awesome shots. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, photographers to watch. My pick is Christopher Harnish, and he's a professional photographer based in Lafayette, Indiana. Um, it, when you look at his stream, he has a really great variety of, of original work. Um, one thing you'll notice is there's a lot of depth in his photos. So you, you can see, here's an example, you know, gorgeous foliage, but but also you can see uh, he's he's emphasizing depth. Um, and uh, here's another one, monochrome. He has a variety of architecture, cityscapes, you know, gorgeous landscapes, abstracts. Um, so I encourage you to check them out and uh, add them to your circles. So uh, are you all seeing? Are you all seeing that on there? Because all I'm seeing is Jim's uh, profile, but I'm no, seeing. Are you seeing the yeah. pictures? I saw it. Okay. Okay, um, there. Now it's come back. It's come back. So, Margaret. Uh, my recommended photographer is Travis Rhodes, uh, who's uh, out of Wichita, Kansas. And uh, he does just some incredible work, and I really like this one. It's got that gorgeous fall color and the wonderful soft uh, water. And I love the perspective of this. It's kind of low, um, you know, right at the water level, and you're almost looking up at those trees, and then you've got the, the waterfall upstream. Just, just totally gorgeous. Uh, love this. He does not have very many followers. So uh, you may not have him in your circles, but do check out his profile. Uh, his work is just exceptional. And here's another one. I love the fall leaves. So we were talking about those. And uh, Kevin, I think, mentioned finding them in the streams. 
and just how effective they can be with the uh, gorgeous uh, lushness of this and the wonderful colors from the fall leaves and and then that great soft water it's just it's a home run of a photograph so do check him out that's Travis Rhodes beautiful okay uh, let's see on to Tom I, I have picked a fellow from Sydney Australia Gerard Blacklock and um, I like how unusual his shots were. When I, when I first saw this one, I, th I thought of typically you get uh, gallery rack can canvases in position like this, and it's one big panoramic shot. But I looked at it and said, something's a little bit odd here. And then I, I read his description here. And if you notice, it's taken from basically the same spot. And that one rock that's lighter colored than the others is all the same rock. He's just positioning diff around it. So I thought it was interesting the way he put this whole shot together. Mm -hmm. as well as being a great shot and here's here's one of a, a walkway a, a long exposure you can see the you know the water moving and the clouds moving but I, I like the, the the pier going off into the di distance yeah. here so I, I think he, he's a, a good good one to follow as well yeah. so, gorgeous my work. Pick of the week. yeah beautiful work okay thanks Tom um, Kevin yeah, so this is uh, Patrick Willemain, and uh, he's in France, but, uh, you know, this pic picture kind of speaks for itself. So um, if you haven't already circled Patrick, go circle him and then ask him how he got this group of wild horses to pose perfectly for him like that with <laughs> that in the background. That's just amazing. And then, you know, he takes uh, – go ahead and go to the next one. He, he has quite a few – um, pictures of volcanoes and interesting stuff like this so uh, go ahead and check him out and circle him so you can uh, follow his work beautiful okay and now Kara and you can wrap it up okay um, this is a photograph by um, Jasmine Simpson and she's in Victoria British Columbia, Canada, and they had Thanksgiving before we did a couple of weeks ago. So uh, she is a very interesting photographer because she also helps people with scrapbooking and their photography. So uh, she's, she's great. And just so everyone knows who's listening, there will be a circle with all the photographers to watch, so it will be very easy to follow these people. So... And there is the example of her using uh, the red leaf um, saying, I love Canada. And so it was just kind of fun, kind of different, and just a different twist on how to uh, be uh, using your photography. And thank you, Jim. Okay, great. Thanks, Cara. All right. So we'll go back here, and we just want to thank everyone again for um, all of your contributions, your nice comments in the event. I want to summarize what Margaret announced, a wonderful opportunity when you're following the landscape photography theme page and posting that at the end of each month there will be this wonderful video of the uh, photographs that have been selected and uh, Kevin Rowe will be creating that and so another reason to do it so we want you to follow landscape photography circle our show and land those show notes with what we've talked about today with some links uh, will be there and our next show will be uh, November episode 23 um, Tuesday November 19th and it's 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time <laughs> and uh, we'll be discussing black and white photography and our special guest will be Charles Lupica from Switzerland and on the 24th uh, or episode 24 which is December 3rd same time frame 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time we'll be discussing how to market your images online that you've uh, done very well with uh, getting out there now how how do we actually turn it into uh, this uh, where I actually bought one from Chris Lloyd 
Lord, Chris, I'm so excited about it. But where your photos are out there and how do you get someone to go ahead and buy it? So we're very excited about the next couple of shows. Uh, we look forward to seeing you and we'll say goodbye and thanks again for all of the support and all of the contributions to our event. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Okay.